We run 525 fully owned medical centres across nine countries today. We service more than 25,000 corporate clients. Many of them are Fortune 500 companies. And every year we are handling more than 12 million patient visits across the nine countries that we're in. And growing. We run diagnostic imaging, plain x-rays to mammograms to MRI, CTs and PET scans. And then we also own laboratories and even our day surgery centres are on the pipeline. What was very apparent to me in Singapore in the late 2000s, healthcare inflation in Asia and Singapore was particularly disturbing. There was obviously a lot of wastage and inefficiency in the ecosystem. It was a gap that we found within the Singapore ecosystem at that point in time. Healthcare tended to have huge variability in cost and delivery. It became very apparent to us that if we started a healthcare provider that could deliver consistency in quality, and price it affordably, we could be in business for the next 30 years. In September 2011, which is nine months after we started the business, things were not panning out the way we expected. Sales were not growing, revenue wasn't growing at the rate that we expected, and we had some difficult decisions to make. Did we want to basically have a very short-term outcome, or were we in it for the long haul? I had coffee with Daniel, you know, somewhere in Singapore. And uh, that was a tough conversation we had. We owed it to ourselves, but also to the people who believed in us to say that, no, we're going to hang on, we're going to soldier on, and we're going to fight to keep the company. And sometimes we have to pinch ourselves in the morning when we realise how much we've done in, the, in a very short space of a decade. And we started winning a lot of clients. And very quickly, by middle of 2013, we were apparently the second or third largest corporate healthcare provider in Singapore. A lot of the businesses that we bought over the years, and we bought a lot of businesses, how we succeeded was we never took shortcuts in building the relationships, spending the time, understanding the key values that the counterparties had. Did it make a difference? And also how the business valued its people. And I'm very happy to say that for all the businesses that we bought, I would say more than 90% of the entrepreneurs are still involved in the business today. I think if you look at many private healthcare companies out there, very few would come out and say that their mission vision is to deliver affordable and accessible healthcare. And that's what's really set us apart. When we designed our first clinic, uh, it was always with the patient at its core. We wanted to deliver high-end service, but at the same time, we didn't want it to lose its human touch. And we want to avoid some of the mistakes that we see in some of the developed markets where they've gone big on the hospital care. The way to solve healthcare problems in many of the markets that are in Asia, which are emerging markets, is not to build more hospitals. <laughs> it's actually health education and preventive health. Many of our clients have been able to save a lot of money on the healthcare budgets just by rolling out some of these proactive preventive programs that we propose to them. When we started the business, it was really from a youthful idealism that we wanted to make a difference in the world. We want to do what we feel is right, not only for ourselves as individuals, but it's right for the company, but more importantly, what's right for the patient. We're all in this world together.